Welcome to this latest installment of my tutorial on Final Jeopardy wagering, and today I'm excited to introduce you to one of my favorite situations. It's called Shores Conjecture, and it's one of the most misunderstood mind game scenarios in wagering. Andy Saunders, the Jeopardy fan, put together a big flowchart to outline the possibilities and what happens. Using my rules, we're going to narrow it down to just two criteria. It all relates to second place. Can second place wager so that he can stay above a double up by third and cover a zero wager by the leader? Here's an example from a game from October. We've got Bill in the lead with 10,600, Nolan in second with 7,800, and Sharon a distant third with 1,000. Skip ahead to looking at second and third. If Sharon doubles up, she's going to have 2,000. So to stay above her no matter what, Nolan can wager up to 5,800. Then if we look at rule number three between Bill and Nolan, can Nolan cover a zero wager by Bill while also staying above Sharon? Yes, the difference between these two is 2,800. So you can wager anywhere in this range and cover both a zero wager by Bill and stay above Sharon. Those are the only two criteria for a Shores conjecture situation. So let's say he picks the wager of 4,000. If he gets it wrong, he'll have 3,800, which is more than Sharon. If he gets it right, he'll have 11,800, which is more than what Bill has going into Final Jeopardy. Wagering fans have identified three different forms, or what I like to call flavors, of Shores Conjecture. Weak, intermediate, and strong. Now this all depends on what third place has to do to be in contention, if at all possible. This is an example of a weak scenario. Third place can't catch up to Bill. Bill wagers to lock out Nolan, he'll wager 5,000, so if he gets it wrong, he'll have 5,600. Sharon can have at most 2,000. She's eliminated. Now, I'm not really interested in weak situations, so let's look at an example of a strong situation. Here we've got Bill, the same Bill, in the lead with 13,800, Mike with 12,300, and Rebecca with 3,400. If Rebecca doubles up, she's going to have 6,800. So to stay above her, Mike can wager up to 5,500. Now, the difference between Bill and Mike is 1,500. So anything in this range would be considered what we'd call a strategic wager. Now, why is this a strong situation? Well, if Bill wagers to lock Mike out, he'll have to wager 10,800. If he gets it wrong, he's going to be left with 3,000, which is less than what Rebecca went into final with. So she doesn't even have to do anything if she thinks Bill is going to go for the lockout. Of course, against Mike, there might be other things, but this is all that matters to qualify it as a strong scenario. Finally, there's the intermediate form, which, as you might guess, is between strong and weak. Here we have John with 12,100, Stephen with 10,800, and Whitney with 1,800. We'll first check to see if it qualifies for a shore situation, and we'll see that Stephen can wager up to 7,200 against Whitney, and the difference between these two is 1,300, so anything in this range is a strategic wager for Stephen. To cover Stephen, John's going to need to wager 9,500. If he gets it wrong with this wager, he'll be left with 2,600, which is more than what Whitney has, but she could double up and pass John. So an intermediate situation is when first will fall to a point where third can catch him, but you'll have to get it right to do so. Now I'm going to show you a shortcut to determine which form of Shores Conjecture applies, and this is useful not just in Shores Conjecture games either. We'll discuss that in a second. Take the difference between first and second and compare with third score going into final. Here the difference between these two is 2800, which is more than what third place has. If third place doesn't have the difference between first and second, he's eliminated. First won't fall far enough for third to be able to catch him. In this situation, the difference is 1500. Third has 3400, which is more than 1500. It's also more than twice 1500. If third place has more than double the difference between first and second, he doesn't have to wager anything in the hopes that first will go for the lockout and get it wrong. And in the intermediate form, as you might expect, it's in the middle. The difference is 1300, which is less than what third place has, which is good, but third place doesn't have quite twice the difference between first and second. Therefore, third is in contention, but we'll need to get it right and wager enough to have a chance in final. Now, each of these forms has special nuances, which are fun to talk about from the comfort of your own home, not on stage for sure. 
and we'll look at those next time on The Final Wager.